everyone thanks for dropping right on in so today we're going to be doing something that a lot of my design friends if you're a designer and you're looking for some fresh gradient animations to use in uh, your UI design this one's exactly for you so without diving too deep into details let's just get right on in. all right so diving right in right on into it all what we're gonna do is first things first like per usual delete everything so you're gonna press a then X and confirm that now I'm gonna change things up a little bit for all of the people that have been in a few of my tutorials before turn on ambient occlusion in bloom per usual but in the color management we're gonna switch that from film mythic to standard and you'll see actually you won't see why yet until I show the example okay so in order to make a gradient in Blender, we have some luxuries. We can just use lights and then we're going to simply just animate them around the plane. So what do we need first? We're going to need a nice plane and I'm going to make my plane. I'm going to leave it actually as is for right now. I'm going to hold tilde and do top shift a bring in a camera, <clears throat> press G and then Z to just move it along the plane, then right click down here right at this little divider and do a vertical split and hold down tilde and just view the camera and the reason why we do this is we just want to see uh, how big of a plane do we need and I'm gonna do mine for like a, a desktop wallpaper or something like that so what you do is press S and then X you can see it's on the red and then just drag it out a little bit and now you have that and our plane is matching that size now if you want to go ahead and use a different dimension you can just change the resolutions and from there you'll be chilling okay so now we have our plane um what you want to do now is bring in a few we're going to bring in a few lights and do some material stuff just so we can see a brief example so what i like to do with the materials is do another split and then open up shader editor by clicking that top left hand corner and doing shader and let's go ahead and drop this into uh, rendered because this is going to be dark now turn the strength down to about zero okay and let's go ahead and bring in a point light i'm just going to bring in a point light and make sure that it's just directly kind of above above our plane if you wanted to know how i just full screen that it's control and space okay so now you can see a brief example what you want to do with your plane is now create a material i'm going to call this our plane <laughs> surprise i'm going to up arm i'm going to up the metallic a little bit turn down the roughness actually i'm going to turn up the roughness a bit what you want to do is you want to make sure the light is well spread. So sometimes you just got to kind of play with it. So this is... Because if it's too... Trans or not rough enough, you won't get that dispersed lighting. Okay, this is good enough, actually. Okay, now that you see we have some lights, we're going to spawn... I'm going to spawn in a few lights. Um, and this is where you're going to pick your color palette. Uh, in terms of color palette direction, I'm going to go ahead and just help you guys out here. So Firefox. There's a site called Colors. Within here, just drop right into trending palettes. And you'll see from here, you can just copy and paste some hex codes. So let's create a gradient that is um somewhere around here somewhere around here so actually no i did that this morning when i was practicing this tutorial let's grab like a green ish kind of gradient or something like this so let's grab that and i'm going to show you how to modify the light uh, color first and then from there everything will be pretty self-explanatory for now within your light section once you have your point light selected you'll see that you will have this object data properties so color you just bring in that hex code now because you and i are in blender 
things don't always map out one to one in terms of how bright hexes are. You want to make it pretty bright. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just control D, press X and just drag it along. Control D, hold X and drag it along. And then what you can do to make this a little bit quicker, select all three by holding down shift, shift D, move it on the Y axis, get one on top, shift D, move it on the Y axis as well, get one on the bottom. From there, you can see we have a bit of like this interesting gradient that isn't so interesting at this point in time, but we're gonna make it a little bit cooler. Okay, so let's go back to our colors. Actually, I'm losing my place on which one was which, hey? Eh? And You can see as long as we stay in the same range, things look kind of cool and they look okay. So now what you're gonna wanna do, here's how we make the gradient animate. So go ahead in your, that doesn't really help you out. In your timeline view down below, by default should be here. Make your end 300. I'm just gonna keep this real simple in terms of the math. Now. We're just gonna go ahead and select one of these light bulbs, press N, and then what we're gonna be pretty much keyframing, we're just gonna be moving these around in a few spots. So I'm gonna do one, and then I'll, I'll do two, just make sure everything goes by sweetly. And then from there, you, you'll get the gist, and we can just keep it pushing. So press I to create a keyframe here. If not, you can just right click, and then we're gonna do here is copy that first keyframe, put it right here. I'm going to go to 100, and then we're just going to go ahead and move it on the Y and X only because we don't want it to move on the Z because then that's going to affect like how bright things are and stuff like that. We don't want that. So we just moved it on 100. Let's go to 200 and move it to another space. Y, X, move it up here. I and what you'll see is now our light is essentially just moving around and we're gonna do that for another one and I'm gonna let you learn free with your creativity so I'm gonna take this one I to the last frame press I again go to 100 Move this around a little bit. I'm gonna move it maybe over here. Press I again, go to 200. Move it down here, move X, this right here. Press I again. And now you'll see, we have two of these bad boys moving around. Okay. I'm gonna just skip on through this and then we'll pick up right where we left. Just realized I made a brief mistake, everyone. You're gonna wanna start every animation on the zero frame, not the one on the zero. This will allow it to loop perfectly. All right, so jumping right back on in, you can see we have our animation flowing, all three of them are moving. And from there, you pretty much have a finished composition. You can add a little bit of uh, spice if you want with the compositing nodes later on. I don't wanna dive too deep into that just to keep the tutorial nice and short and sweet. But from there to render, all you need to do is make sure you do FFmpeg video 
turn on MPEG-4 and do it on perpetually lossless and you'll be chilling. So that's pretty much it. So I'm going to catch you again uh, after this is done rendering and we can just talk about it. All right, y'all. Thank you once again for diving on in. I think you did great today. I'd love to see your creation. Uh, feel free to tag me on Twitter or Instagram, or you can even just DM me. That's perfectly fine with me. I just love to see what people create. And I also love to see just how you customize this to your own your own being. You know, when I said go into the compositor, maybe try adding like some lens or maybe try doing like a difference layer, or maybe even like throwing some graphics on top of it, some text, make it like a poster flyer. There's unlimited combinations and I love to see what your mind can do. But Nonetheless, thank you once again, and I will hopefully see you again in the next tutorial or video. You know, I just I just picked up this camera. I, show you. I just picked up this camera uh, not too long ago, and I've been recording. So there's been a lot of me and a lot of Jira to see in there as well, because I know Jira has quite a few fans that are always looking for her. So we'll see how things go. But anyways, guys, thank you once again, and I'll see you. Peace out.